I don't know where I'm going with that. But the afters, I was going to talk shit on the concept of afters. But when I'm in San Francisco. Yeah, you go on some afters. I go to DNA Lounge you, sometimes. That's right, dude. You go where else? I mean, in DNA in Vegas, Lounge. Just in, my spot in San Francisco. In Vegas, you like. Is some that after- filthy? It's called DNA Lounge. I'd say that's a little weird. Yeah. It's, it's a little, little DNA Lounge. Yeah. Like do people swap DNA in there? Is they do. A- you shoot your DNA mm-hmm. on sometimes an incapacitated body in the alley. Mm. That'll happen. A guy will be like, hey, dude. <laughs> Passed out out there. If you want to come on, you want to jizz on? Is that just a normal up. thing? Is it is it is it possible the guy the guy? I mean, if you were a homosexual bum, I would try to maybe find my way to San Francisco. Yeah, in the Castro, I guarantee it happens, dude. Yeah. In the Castro, I've been out in the Castro a couple times in mm-hmm. San Francisco. You can do fucking anything. You there. think there's a bum out there in in the Castro in San Francisco who is like, I'm gonna pass out right here, and I hope someone jizzes on me. I don't know if there's a gay bum. But when I've spent time in the Castro, I, two occasions come to mind. One, I was at brunch with my buddy Tim. Mm. It's like noon on a Sunday, you know, the Lord's Day. And a guy who looks like he's been working out and who looks like he's in a hurry just comes into our field of vision and crosses the street completely naked. <laughs> <laughs> Just walking like he's on his way to meet up with a friend. What? Not under the influence. And it wasn't like, you see that in L.A., but it's usually just a, it's all, it's a well-hung black man, and he's completely out of his mind on Skid Row. That's you see that you sometimes. See that, yeah. Not this case. Mm-hmm. In San Francisco, I've actually brushed up against a couple of naked parades in San Francisco. Parades or events, but then also just the lone guy in the Castro just wanting to get across the street. Wow. And then the other time I was there, it was when this guy who was like sugar daddying me for a while. Mm. I've told this story, but basically this guy said he was a photographer and wanted to help launch my writing career. I was fucking naive enough when I was 20 to think he actually gave a shit about my writing and didn't just want his dick in my asshole, Mm. which is what he really wanted. Mm. But he took me out to the Castro one night, and I remember there was a go-go dancer, you know, about five foot ten, nice body. This kid was working out. Mm. And the guy I was with, this old dude, who 66 years old, but looked like he was in his late 70s, did not look good for his age. He was past his cock-chasing prime. He just fucking locks into this go-go dancing kid, just walks right over him, pulls out a fistful of 20s from oh, his pocket, God. lifts the kid's thong front-wise, front-wise, and just stuffs it down into his penis compartment. Oh, my God. No doubt got a little handful of that junk. It was a big cock, too. Oh, shit. These are the experiences that shaped who you are, huh? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> I think so, dude. Uh, what? How do you pr- you presume that man wanted to fuck your asshole? But like, how do you know that he wasn't just like maybe a bottom? Maybe he wanted you all up in there, man. You ever think about that? I didn't think about that, Leo. And I think it's that's an important, important distinction. I do. I, I believe it is because you know one. I mean, how much would how would he just hand you cash? No, it wasn't that Damn lucrative. It. Like I went to a symphony with another gay guy once. Oh. This is I, I hung out with this guy too many times. I was <laughs> clearly onto it. I too many times because yeah, there was. I went to a symphony with him. Yeah, he, so you just got you you just got some, what like some some knowledge of the world from this guy. So uh, a symphony, they are in any art form. If you give it enough time and enough pretentious fucks sure. and tweed jackets and spectacles come in there mm-hmm. and like outthink each other and are like, yeah, that, that's, that sucks. Or like, yeah, yeah, this is fine art. You end up with horse shit. Yeah. Absolute horse shit. So what should be good, enjoyable music when you go to the symphony just sounds like a kid with Down syndrome banging on piano keys. Yeah, because they don't want to have like a a chorus or whatever. Like they, they don't oh, want to have. Like, are you kidding? They don't even want to have a verse. Exactly. So it's all. Yeah, no, it's annoying. I had to go for for I music class. I mean, I, I, had, I had to go in college for music class. No, but I get it. I I just didn't get it. I didn't even know when to clap. I didn't even know when it was over. People would start a rousing ovation. I was like, oh, it's over. A rousing oh. ovation. Yeah, because they were pretending that they enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, yeah, sure. They were getting boners, Danny. The guy up there, and he was really fucking weird. The guy up there, he had terrible posture on the piano bench. And he was doing that thing where he was acting like he was really taken away by his own piano playing. Which is, like, unless you're 
Jimi Hendrix up there, which who knows? This guy might have been the Jimi Hendrix of the symphony. Mm. I don't want to see you getting too into your own playing, okay? That's what they train you to do in like all art schools, because I know that uh, people that told me that they went, you know, they, they were musical theater people or people that are actors, it's kind of like... You have to put your whole being into it. And it is kind of cheesy sometimes because who knows if they could just nail it, even if they were just like more technical, I, you know, I, I, like you that's get, what that's where art is. The you got to be careful, though, because if you're the fourth flutist and yeah. you're up there losing yourself to your art and you're like, you're right, right, right. It's ridiculous. Like you can't you can't because like the girl next to you was Asian yeah. and hasn't moved her face yeah. in three hours. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, you can't be... But the guy on the piano, who, granted, he was the star, this was him out there, just... Austin, can you pull up a dissonant piano piece? I need you to type that in. Just, like, classical dissonant. piano. Just... Let me take a crack out of that. D-I-S-S-O-N-A-T. All right, we're going to find this. But then the gay guy who I was with, this old gay guy who I should have known by this point had yeah. no interest in giving me high-quality photographs that I could use on my website. Sure. He had, well, I guess, high interest in giving me high-quality photographs of my own jizz-filled asshole. Sure, that's what he wanted. He would love to do that. <laughs> Creating but your first video. He, he pulled a, a big shot move and was like, do you want to meet the pianist? Oh, God. And he took me back there, and the guy was just like, oh, uh, hi. What, it, you, it, you could tell it was an imposition on the gay guy's part. Sure. Like, the guy was not wanting to meet... It was sort of like when fans try to get us to fuck their girlfriend. Yeah. Like, like okay, no, hi, yeah, on. sure. Yeah, 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 18th kid tonight. This is getting old. Let's play uh, it, Austin. Let's hear. More dissonant. Not good enough. It's okay. Oh, my God, dude. This sounds like a Britney Spears song compared to what this guy was playing. Yeah, there, there wouldn't even be... It... It doesn't even. You can't enjoy it. Yeah, really. you can. You can press pause, Austin. It. It looked like they. They gave. A, so here's what it sounded like. It sounded like they put a bunch of earthworms on the piano keys, mm -hmm. and then they put a toucan there, and the toucan <laughs> was just pecking at worms. That's a great. Yeah, that's absolutely how it is. I think everybody should go to a symphony to to just go through what we went through. Um, I actually, I did leave after the, the first, I left during intermission. It was horseshit. It was pretty bad. That's a good point though. Like, dude, I had to do a, a project at UCLA in arts and architecture, dude, yeah. on, on an exhibit at the Hammer Museum. And the exhibit was a piece of toast with yeah. three holes in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the guy like put, you know, some kind of thing to, you know, set it for forever and put it on, on a, on some, you know, a little platform. It, and it's, it's avant-garde yeah. is the word. There was a so, urinal that was upside down, too. I remember thinking that was ridiculous. And here's the thing behind it. Here's what all that avant-garde is. Because the artists can craft something that does have popular appeal in that line of art, everybody is willing to humor them on the horseshit. Example is Radiohead. Hmm. Radiohead the band. Because they wrote Creep, and because they wrote Fake Plastic Trees... Everybody's willing to listen to moon-shaped pool and pretend it's good. Yeah, that's what you're saying. I wish I knew more about Radiohead. You know, I actually like Radiohead, and I like some of their later, more experimental. I know albums. creep. I, I don't. I don't want to slam moon-shaped pool. Some of you guys might love it. It's probably sweet, but that's more. I'm trying to make a point. I'm trying to make a point about this asshole at the symphony. Yeah. Sounds like one of the worst sugar daddy experiences I've ever heard. It honest. wasn't too bad, man. He took me to dinners a, and shit. He took me to dinner. Uh huh. I've told this story before, so I'm not getting too into sure. it. But basically, I was at my restaurant delivering food, and that's where he got my number nice. when I was at a table. And then he took me back to the restaurant on a date. Oh, God. So I was there. That's awesome. Eating amongst my coworkers. They were forced to serve me. Yeah. As uh, a 68-year-old homosexual yeah. tried to not grab my crotch. Did he ever make a move? This is where it got to. So this was probably the third time we hung out, which again, oh I just, it might have been the fourth and I'm really starting to feel like an idiot. <laughs> but the fourth time we hung out, we, I just got back from jujitsu and I had to shower mm. in his apartment, which was a beautiful two bedroom unit over Union Square. Nice. I mean, this thing would go for some coin. Wow. Landry. Was but, it, uh, 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 what do you think he was paying at the time? I think he owned it. Oh, wow. Condo? Yeah. Man. Oh. This thing, it probably would have rented. probably over a million now. 
It would have been over a million at the time. Wow. This thing was incredible. But he he found my dirty jujitsu laundry on the floor. Oh god. And he was like, Oh, oh my god, can I can I that's how he talked too. He was had really nervous energy. Oh my can I smell your jock strap? No, dude. And at first I just kind of went like, ah, no, nah, yeah, you know, and he's like, oh, oh my God. I want to no, smell. Oh, dude. dude, I got. That is so creepy. You know, it got worse, Leo. I just no. remember. It got worse, dude. I, um, so we were talking about dick size. Yeah. Because that was at a time in my life where my girlfriend at the time, she told me that she banged a black dude in Paris with a giant dick. And inspired that book. It inspired a book that's on Amazon, mm -hmm. When Your Girlfriend Bangs a Black Dude. Very nice piece of writing, actually. <laughs> I encourage people to check it out. But I, I was in the middle of what I call in the book my own personal cock crisis. Okay. <laughs> and I was convinced that my cock was like subpar at the sure. time. And so I was asking him about it. I mean, Leo, this was the only guy who would sit there and listen. Sure. He had no ulterior motive, right? No, not at all. He probably wanted just to, to help you with your confidence. Now yeah. I know how girls feel. Yeah. When guys are like, oh, yeah, your ex-boyfriend is an asshole. Oh, yeah, honey, you deserve way better. <laughs> yeah, dude, that's what this and so I, he was like, oh, yeah, I've seen a very small penises. I've seen penises that were just a pinky. You know, he's got that energy again. He's sure, like, sure. I've seen penises that were just like a pinky. He's like, wow, what size is yours? Really? I mean, you can be honest with me. And, like, and I was like, well, you know. I got a picture of it, and he's like, oh, oh my God, can I see it? And I was like, well, you know, just because you've oh seen God. so many, like I, and I pull it up on my phone, like, scroll, scroll, show it to him, and he just goes, oh, oh my God. No. That's so fucking hot. Oh, God, dude. And he just, like, the whole rest of the dinner, he was he could not contain himself. Yeah, he had to talk about that. He, yeah. he was sweating and stuttering. Sugar mama, uh, that's, yeah, you know, now I feel grateful that, I, you know, I've only had to deal with, we got kicked out of Nobu when we when I showed up hammered to the podcast. Oh, yeah, Definitely yeah. got kicked out of Nobu because she climbed on top of me and I was not not into it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that was uh, way, it's not, you know, accidentally thinking that a guy cares about the size of your penis showing him a picture <laughs> and then having that guy just, I know what a guy would be like after that. Oh, it'd be man. like if a girl, if it, it'd be like if you were at dinner with a, you know, a, an Asian with just a fat ass, let's say. Yes. Something like that. You can't deny it. Although you like the boobs, but let's say then she showed you a picture of her ass during dinner. Yes. You wouldn't be able to talk about anything else the rest of the time. And also, he was 68, and I was straight. Mm -hmm. So I must have been an even larger commodity. Yeah. Okay, I was the prize swordfish on the angler's rod. How old were you? 26. Hmm? 26. In your prime. Straight. And then he was like 68. So yeah, I mean, it would even be worse. It's where it would be worse, yeah. I, I, I don't blame him for losing his fucking shit no. at the time. No. Then again, he did manage to. He was getting a lot of play. Yeah. Like there was a chef. That, we went to one of these restaurants in San Francisco. Really, really nice. And the guy, the gay guy was, he was cool. He was nice and he was well connected. Sure. We'd go to five-star restaurants. The chef would come out to greet him, bring us personal tasting plates and shit. And I guess one of the chefs that came out, who was like maybe late 30s, the gay guy that was going after me just ended up one night getting the chef fucked up enough on cocaine and just sucked the guy's dick. Oh, my God. What, what an existence where you just kind of have to spend a, a, a crap load of money or give someone a bunch of drugs just to suck them off? I think you're going to be happy with that trade when you reach age 68. Well, uh, I'm going to be the guy getting sucked. No, uh, you would eat some Asian pussy. I would eat some Asian. Oh, yeah. Maybe at that 